What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Wes, welcome back to the channel, and it's time for another Kaiju number 8 chapter review. So this chapter begins just after Hoshina bodied the main Mantis Kaiju. I thought it would immediately move on to another character this chapter, but it lingers on Hoshina for a bit before we rejoin the other cast. I wonder if this is because Matsumoto knows that fans love Hoshina so much, so he's trying to give him as much page time as possible. I mean, I ain't complaining, Hoshina is a dope character, but I wonder what the character popularity data from fans over in Japan looks like, because I'm almost positive Hoshina is top three in the series at least. So Hoshina and number 10 continue their antics and Matsumoto continues to write these nice comedic interactions between the two. Now that the Chofu airport is clear of Kaiju, number 10 shows that he has absolutely no chill and wants to kill the nearby defense force officers cause well, he's just not done yet. But yo, with all due respect to Hoshina and his achievements, as long as number 10 has control over that tail, if I'm a lowly troop member and Hoshina just saved my life from some kaiju, I'ma give the man his props, yeah, but uh, I ain't getting too close. Like, I'm gonna have to thank him from at least a half a block away cause I don't play that. Like, listen, sir, I am allergic to getting speared. Thank you very much. All right, you stay over there. But anyway, this team up is just funny. Hoshina tells number 10, like, what are you, a dope? We can't kill the homies. And then 10 basically just pouts and sticks his tail in the ground. We learned ironically that the officers that built the suit already predicted that this team up was going to be hilarious. So they named the suit the comedic duo. I'd imagine that one of the operators back at Tachikawa is just having a blast recording the whole thing too. It's funny because Hoshina is the guy that likes to pick on and laugh at other people like Kafka, but he is not going to be able to live this one down at all. Hoshina's maximum combat release force with number 10 is 77%. If I remember correctly, his maximum with a normal suit is 92%. Okonogi notes that he's scaling with his max release force while wearing a normal suit. If you look at the little graph on the screen next to her, then we can see that the number 10 suit scales way higher than the regular suits, which is to be expected. So a Hoshina at 77% release force while wearing number 10 is far stronger than a Hoshina wearing a regular suit at 92% release force. This makes me excited to see what Hoshina can do at full power because the man is already a problem. And I know he'll likely be forced to go full force sometime during this invasion arc. Pretty much everyone is going to have to go all out on number nine at some point. Next, we jump to Shinoname and Tachibana platoon and they're both grouped up trying to evacuate the civilians during the invasion, which isn't being made easy because of the gridlock that's happening. And to make matters worse, they also have to contend with six super giant class Kaiju. I gotta hand it to Matsumoto. He's pretty great at coming up with new designs for the Kaiju in this series thus far. Also, six Kaiju of this size have never been encountered in the same exact area at the same time before. And when you think about it, you can see how even killing any one of these kaiju can be a big problem with so many civilians in the area. If you kill the kaiju and they spawn an after beast, then you have that to deal with. Not to mention that if you kill a kaiju of that particular size, it has to fall down somewhere, right? And there's just way too many people around, making this a no win situation if you can't destroy most of the kaiju's body in a few seconds. That is, unless you have Kafka Hibino on your squad. Man, it is so good to see him. Oshina is my boy, don't get me wrong, but Kafka is the goat in this manga. He's over there on rear guard duty while Shinoname herself is at the front lines. And Kafka gives her a call like, hey, listen, I am him. I've never fought a kaiju that big before, but please let me handle this. Let me do work. And it would actually be a solid matchup when you consider the fact that Kafka's ability to completely obliterate Kaiju on a molecular level would solve the issue of more Kaijus emerging from the corpse of the supergiant, and it would also solve the problem of the body falling over onto civilians in the area in literally one punch. We've seen our boy do it before. Come on now, we know he can do it again. And the defense force knows this too, but they're playing the long game with number nine, so Shinoname turns down his request and explains that Kafka's partial transformation during the last Kaiju emergence event 
revealed his exact location to number nine. Kafka is now the trump card of the Defense Force, and they want to keep Kafka under wraps until it's time to finally deliver the death blow to nine. And I think this is a smart play. They can't take risks with dropping Kafka in the middle of nowhere and just have nine pull up and spin the block with his little finger bullets. That'd be too much of an L if he just rolled up on Kafka, absorbed him and took his powers too. At that point, all hope would literally be lost. And as a matter of fact, I'm wondering what the Defense Force has planned for the other suit users because each and every one of them should be a target for assimilation by number nine. So I'm really curious to see what the big play here is by the JDF. Next, one of the super giant Kaiju decides to start blowing up the city with a Cerro Blast because everyone has Cerro Blast these days. <laughs> and then it's just more Black Air Force activity happening. Mina Ashiro, who mind you, we've only ever seen some of what this woman is capable of, gets on the radio like, nah, 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 sit back. Don't even sweat, I've got this. If Kafka is him, I am her. And Shinoname is like, but you're not even here on the front lines. You ain't with us in the trenches, getting dirty. You ain't on these streets out here slaying kaiju, getting guts and blood all over you. <laughs> and the next panel is just the entire super giant behind Shinoname getting 360 no scoped all the way from Tachikawa base. And Tachikawa base is apparently 20 kilometers away. I would translate that into miles, but I don't read manga to do math, so I'm just gonna go with the understanding that that is insanely far away. And then she does it again and gets a two for one shot while everyone is just looking on, realizing how much of a scrub they really are when compared to Ashiro. This woman, Mina, has a whole anti super giant kaiju railgun that is dedicated exclusively for her use. Imagine the amount of money the country had to spend in taxes to set that thing up, and she is the only one who can use it. Whew. This solidifies why Mina is her. She's just her, yo. But you know what? That might not be a good thing for Mina because she is the problem right now. Not a problem, but she is the problem for number nine. On any battlefield, what's the first thing that has to be eliminated so that your troops can move in on the ground and get to business. Heavy anti-air artillery, especially snipers that double as anti-air support. And Amina isn't just any sniper. She can shoot from the safety of her home base. So here's the thing, number nine can't have that. We know he is a strategist. He won't keep putting pieces on the board only for them to get taken out. He's going to instantly have to set his sights on Ashiro. Otherwise, she's just gonna be able to assist in far too many fights using her railgun, Kronos. Also, I'd imagine that thanks to the memories of Iseo, number nine probably already knows about Kronos. So it wouldn't surprise me if he already has a countermeasure in place. But I'm thinking that Amina needs to watch her back over there. Just because you're back on base doesn't mean that number nine won't show up to give you those hands, cause We've already lived through that once. He'll do it again if he has to. Not to mention, Mina has been shown to be a long-ranged fighter. We've yet to see some serious close quarters combat from her. So I'm wondering if number nine will send one of his newly created Daikaiju to deal with her while he sits back and waits for Kafka to transform first, forcing Mina to defend herself at close range with the help of her tiger Bako. I'm feeling like that's the angle Matsumoto is going to go with as these chapters continue. This was a cool little chapter. I'm gonna give it a seven. Not too much happened, but we've learned about how the battlefield looks now. We know Kafka is with Shinona May Platoon and that he's on the rear guard, but he's there for his own safety and is being saved as the death blow for number nine when he's cornered. We now know for sure that the weapon suits scale completely different from regular suits. So even someone like Kikoru can possibly compete with a vice commander like Hoshina if she's wearing number four and he's wearing a regular suit. We've also learned about the railgun installation back at Tachikawa base. That is a whole problem that number nine is going to have to respond to. Right now, the play for number nine might revolve around getting Kafka to reveal himself so that he can attempt to assimilate him for his power. The quickest way to do that would be to go after any of Kafka's close friends, especially Mina. She's like public enemy number one. 
I don't know how this is going to pan out, but I am excited for the next chapter nonetheless. I can already tell that with the way Matsumoto is playing up the strength of the defense force during the invasion, that something bad is going to happen. And the next thing we'll know is the tables are going to turn dramatically. It feels like Matsumoto is doing his best to set up a false sense of security with the reader. And then when those new Daikaiju 9 created make their appearance, things will probably start going south. So those are my thoughts on this chapter. If you enjoy this type of content, then comment down below, click the thumbs up, hit the bell to stay notified and consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. Peace.